ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد Indeed, our praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him as he deserves to be praised, and we ask for his aid and his assistance. And we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from the evil of our wicked actions. Whomsoever Allah azza wa jal guides, then none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah alone without any partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger to proceed. Ibadullah ayyuh al All of us know what happened in West Philadelphia on the day of Eid al-Fitr. News of the incident traveled around the world. It was a global story spread by CNN, the BBC, and other news outlets. We received calls and messages from concerned friends, family, and neighbors as they were worried that it occurred at our Eid celebrations. Even though it was in a different part of the city, it could have easily happened to any of us. As this toxic culture and wave of senseless violence is affecting everyone. No one is safe, no one is immune. However, I refuse to highlight the negative stories without taking time to talk about the positive ones. One of the reasons why we are in this predicament is that many people only spread controversy and drama. But when it comes to good, they are uninterested. In Ramadan 2024, 1445 Hijri, Alhamdulillah, the community, every single night, fed more than 300 people during the blessed month of Ramadan. There were daily classes in the masjid covering verses from the Qur'an, 30 themes from 30 verses, with thousands of listeners online. We had more than 400 people embrace Islam, if we include the Eid. The majority of them were adults. Yes, many of them were young brothers and young sisters. In addition to that, Habidhukumullah, we received the permit to start work on the restaurant. In addition to buying another building on Germantown Avenue, many of you were unaware of this fact. So there's work being done on the ground, and we should thank Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, because if we thank Allah, azza wa jal, then that is a means for Allah to bless us further. As Allah, azza wa jal, he said, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Your Lord has proclaimed, if you thank Him and you are grateful, I will increase you in blessings. And if you are ungrateful, وَلَا إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Indeed, my punishment is severe. Going back to the incident that happened on the day of the Eid, many of you know the masjid released a statement from this masjid in support of the Muslim community at this difficult time because we all recognize the problem. The vast majority welcomed this statement with appreciation and open arms. However, a small minority could not control their jealousy, malice, and hatred. And they used this unfortunate incident to further their own miserable agenda. The Islamophobes, those who hate Islam and the Muslims, they pop their ugly head up at such a time and blame Islam and the Muslims. Comparing the Muslims to ISIS and other fanatical groups. 
The haters, they came out the woodwork and blamed innocent people who had nothing to do with it. Taking pathetic blows and weak shots. And the trolls, they did what trolls do on IG and X with their Twitter fingers. But we expect also some lives in the next few days as well. But I remind you of the statement of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Listen. كُلَّ النَّاسِ أَسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ أُرْضِيَهُ إِلَّا حَاسِدَ نِعْمَةٍ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُرْضِيهِ إِلَّا زَوَالُهَا He said, I can please anyone except the jealous hater who is envious of a blessing. For indeed nothing pleases them except that the blessing is lost. A jealous enemy hates their own image when they see it in the mirror. Never expect for them to support good or love it. When it comes to the jealous, envious person, Allah taught us what? Allah taught us to seek refuge with him from their evil. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. And We seek refuge with our Lord from the envy of the jealous person when they envy. The Prophet ﷺ also taught us, as we find in the hadith, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُعَوِّذَ الْحَسَنُ وَالْحُسَيْنِ وَيَقُولْ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to seek refuge with Allah for Hassan and Hussein. And he would say, Inna Aba Kuma kana yu'awwidhu biha Ismail wa Ishaq. He said, your forefather, meaning Ibrahim, Abraham, used to seek refuge with Allah for Ismail and Ishaq, saying, A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tam min kulli shaytanin wa ham. وَمِن كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّ I seek refuge, O oh Allah. I seek refuge with your perfect words from every devil and poisonous pest and from every evil, harmful, envious eye. May Allah protect us from the haters. In this khutbah, I aim to advise my brothers and sisters, the majority of who love good and want good, and I want to start by saying that advice and nasiha, advice is wanting good for the one that you are speaking to by speaking the truth. Otherwise, it is rich, treachery. For me to stand here and stroke your ego is treachery. And that's one of the reasons why we are in this situation. Because it's difficult for many to give honest, sincere advice. We find brothers and sisters in the Quran. Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam. He said as Allah informed us. أُبَلِّغُكُمْ رِسَالَاتِ Rabbi wa أَنصَحُ lakum. He said I convey to you the messages of my Lord. And I'm sincerely advising you. We would expect that everyone would love advice, right? Advice. Everybody would love it. Everybody would appreciate it. This is not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he informed us. That Salih, he said, Ya qawmi, O my people, Laqad ablagtukum risalata rabbi. I have conveyed to you the message of my Lord. Wa nasahtu lakum. And I advise you with sincere advice. Walakin la tuhibbun al nasiheen. But you do not love sincere Advises. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as comes in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, ad-deen al nasiha the religion is sincerity of purpose and depending upon the context, advice. Our religion is nasiha ad-deen al nasiha Our religion is nasiha Look at this word. They said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْنَا لِمَنْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ We said to whom, O Messenger of Allah? قَالْ He responded, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, لِلَّهِ To Allah, وَلِكِتَابِهِ And to his book, وَلِرَسُولِهِ And to his messenger, وَلِيَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَامَّتِهِمْ And to the leaders of the Muslims and the common people. The religion is nasiha. 
in order for us to grow, we have to be able to give advice and we have to be able to accept sincere advice. What we are going to say, we are not looking for applause, nor are we trying to earn any fake friendships. Because if you can't advise your brother or your sister, they are not really someone that is your friend. Fake smiles and fake hugs will not benefit us in this world, nor will they benefit us in the akhirah. person tells you, I love you, brother. But you may find them plotting behind your back, undermining anything that is good. Even the salam. Assalamu alaikum. How can we say that to a Muslim and we want that Muslim maybe in our heart to be harmed or hurt or even destroyed? Do we know what the salam means? Assalamu alaikum. May Allah grant you peace. May He protect you from anything that is harmful. Assalam is from the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't have to be a scholar to understand the beauty of Islam. All you need to do is have a basic understanding of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we start with advice to the parents. We start with nasiha to the parents. We cannot only blame the children. Online, some people, they're only blaming the children. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, إِذَا اَتَبَرْتَ فَسَادَ الْأَوْلَادِ If you were to look and analyze and study the corruption of the children, رَأَيْتَ عَامَتَهُ مِنْ قِبْلِ الْآبَاء You would find the majority of the corruption of the children, it stems from the negligence of the parents. Where are the parents? Where are the mothers? Where are the fathers? If your child is involved in the killing or the violence, or the madness, you need to put down your iPhone or the Android and raise your children properly. You are part of the problem. If you are at home teaching your son or your daughter to disrespect their teachers, elders, leaders of communities, saying they're nobody, you don't have to listen to them. You are part of the problem. If you are a deadbeat, absent father, you are part of the problem. If you are a divorcee and you are filling your child to hate the other parent because you can't get on with your life, you are part of the problem because disrespect, it breeds disrespect. And that is why some parents, they are like prisoners in their own home and the captor is their son or their daughter. They're scared of their own children. You are part of the problem. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he said, the youth is upon the original upbringing. How you raise your child normally is how your child will grow. Get your children. Don't blame the masjid. Don't blame the teachers. Don't blame Islam. Look in the mirror and blame yourself. If you're busy talking on Instagram, and trying to be the next IG model, blame yourself. If your child is running the streets, causing havoc. If you are a father, and you are not in your child's life, and your child is responsible for what is taking place in the city, don't type anything on social media. We don't want to hear anything you say. First show us that you can be a father, and then we may listen to you. Blame yourself. You are part of the problem. Ask yourself, where is your son? Where is your daughter? And many times, these unfit parents are the ones on social media blaming everyone else. If you cannot lead your own house, how do you expect to lead a community? If you cannot raise your own children, how are you going to raise anybody else? Don't tell us. Show us. The children did not just appear, they were born into this world and they have parents. So before we only blame the children, let the parents look in the mirror. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Kullukum mas'ul. All of you are responsible and all of you will be questioned about your flock. Father is going to be questioned about the people in his household. 
The mother is going to be questioned about her children. Everyone is going to be questioned before Allah Azza wa Jal. And you can't pretend then. You can't make a video on Instagram or TikTok pretending to be a good parent because the reality will be made to be known. No doubt, Ikhwan, at Chalmers, we had thousands of young children. Young Muslim boys and girls. At Chalmers, we had thousands of young children. And as the masjid, they mentioned in their statement, things generally went smoothly, which was accurate. There were a few minor incidents, but our presence and conversations with the youth possibly helped to avoid serious escalations. Yes, there were some small incidents, children being children, but just by speaking to them, being there on the ground with them, not on social media, hopefully it helped avoid what could have happened and happened in other places. I have a solution for next Eid because everybody's offering their solutions, right? I have a solution for the parents. So next Eid, one solution is to keep our young children with us under our supervision. Mothers to be a mother. Fathers to be a father. That is one solution. I'm not going to change it on Instagram and TikTok. Thanian, secondly, the youth. Ad-Din al nasiha The religion is a nasiha Sincerity of purpose. When we're talking to one another, advice. Our religion, from the right of the Muslim, when they ask you for advice, you sincerely advise them. And sometimes, the advice may not be what they want to hear. Your mother and your father, sometimes they advise you, you don't want to hear it. But later on, you know they're right. And that's a sign of genuine love and affection. Advice that will benefit you in the dunya and benefit you when you meet Allah in the akhirah. Many of the youth are embracing Islam, alhamdulillah. No doubt, the youth, they must learn and understand their religion. We mentioned in previous khutab, we see signs that some of the young people, they're not understanding the religion correctly by their behavior and their actions. The Prophet والسلام, he told us who the Muslim is. The Muslim, من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده. In one narration, the Muslim in Nasa'i, the Muslim is the one, the people, they are safe from his tongue and from his hand. And they trust him, the people trust him as it relates to their lives, their blood, and their wealth. That's the Muslim. The Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. Look how we line up in prayer, shoulder to shoulder, ankle to ankle, because the one standing next to you is your brother or your sister. You love them for the sake of Allah. That love, that bond, their blood is forbidden. The honor is forbidden. You have a responsibility to defend them and protect them. It doesn't matter what part of the city you are from. And it doesn't matter who you are running with. And if you don't understand that, then Sheikh Anwar Wright has a book about gangs that you need to read in light of the Quran and the son of the Prophet The youth must learn and understand their religion. Them accepting Islam when not like this movement online. You shouldn't give them shahada. No, we view that them accepting Islam is an advantage because it is a common ground to start conversations and help them where maybe others have failed. And we've seen it. Ask the youth, Ramadan, who were the brothers with them? Sitting with them, breaking fast with them, talking to them. Ask them. Don't ask the one sitting in his house a million miles away on Instagram or just put a tweet on X. Talk to the youth. Yes, alhamdulillah, at this masjid, and this should be at every masjid, maybe other masjid have it as well. We should have programs for the youth. We have a program here and published books. We have the book, A Comprehensive Guide for the New Muslim by Sheikh Anwar Wright. Anyone except Islam here with us, we stress the importance of attending the classes for new Muslims on Sunday for the women and the men which have been going on for many years. And no doubt, we need to improve these programs and make them stronger. However, the problem existed before some of these youth, they took their shahada. And it will continue to exist unless Allah wills otherwise. I'll mention one hadith that is a refutation upon this mentality telling us or advising us, don't give them shahada. 
if these young people sincerely want to embrace Islam and they believe in Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah only is to be worshipped along without any partners and they believe in the prophets and the messengers the last messenger being Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are we going to say no and prevent them from that? There comes the hadith in Bukhari Mughir ibn Shu'bah radiallahu an it mentions أنه كان قد صاحب قوم في الجاهلية he accompanied the people at the time of Jahiliya, pre-Islamic times of ignorance. فَقَتَلَهُمْ وَأَخَذَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ He killed them and he took their money. He took their wealth. ثُمَّ جَاءَ فَأَسْلَمَ He came to the Prophet ﷺ later on. He accepted Islam. What did the Prophet ﷺ say to him? Did he say to him, you can't embrace Islam until such and such. The Prophet ﷺ he said, أَمَّا الْإِسْلَامْ أَقْبَلْ As for your Islam, I accept it. وَأَمَّا الْمَالِ He said, as for the wealth, meaning that you have stolen, we have no need of it. Also, another proof. The man who killed 99 people. If you tell these young people, there's no, you know, wait, there's no way for you to change. What do you think is going to result? When the man told, the ignorant Abid said to the man who killed 99 people, there's no toba for you, there's no repentance. He ended up killing him. So we welcome the youth. We welcome them with open arms. You need us, we're there for you. Not just with empty speech. You come to our masjid, you see us, we break fast with you, we sit with you, we learn with you, we're here with you. You need anything, we're here for you. We told you, rather than go out and steal, you need sneakers, we'll buy them for you. You need something, we'll make a way for you. If we don't have it, we'll try our best to do it for you. That's not just words, but at the same time, the truth is above everyone. You, me, and anyone else. That's why I advise Stop wearing these necklaces like women. I don't know what it is. Why are men wearing now necklaces with the pictures of individuals in these necklaces? Are they charms and amulets? Likewise, the look, we spoke about it. When we embrace Islam, Islam is a whole lifestyle. Aqeedah, belief, worship, character, conduct, dealings. Islam is a whole way of life. This is not no trend. This is not no fad. It's the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. We cannot turn the youth away when they sincerely desire to embrace Islam. But we cannot abandon them either after they embrace. We must be patient with them and teach them as we desire good for them and they are our future. If we're telling them you don't have a place, you're just pretending, this is just some type of trend, what message are you telling to, sending to the youth? And again, with the bad stories, let's share some good stories. An example of a good parent, inshallah ta'ala, nahsabum kadalik, wallahu hasibuhum. And a child that was raised properly. One child, the sneakers went missing, the Yeezys. Expensive sneakers. The child came, it was during Ramadan. Allah, maybe somebody took them by mistake. Allah knows best what happened. Possibly it was deliberate. Allah will give the person that stole them what they deserve. The young boy came, he said, my Yeezys were stolen. The mother came as well. We said, okay, no problem. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll replace the sneakers. We'll buy new ones. No problem. Child came back a few days later. He said, as for the money that you was going to give me for the sneakers, he said, I don't want the money. He said, you can buy a camera for the shoe area and the rest of the money you can utilize towards an iftar. Look at having correct tarbiyah. Look at a mother Raising the child properly. Look at the mentality. Look at that. So we're not only going to talk about the bad stories. We're going to talk about the good stories as well. So you have a camera now. Another camera added in the shoe area. Donated by a young boy. What have we done for Islam in the community? This young boy has done a lot more than many of those people that are running their mouths on social media. Because don't tell us, show us. I've never seen people so interested in the masjid and they don't even pray in the masjid. Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu. Is our relevance tied to a masjid? We give da'wah wherever we are. Anywhere in the dunya. Wa qul ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dham innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa al-aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la udwana illa ala al-dhalimeen. Shadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahidahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Brothers and sisters عباد الله أيها المؤمنون The city actually the world knows that our methodology 
is based upon the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. That is what we strive to adhere to and implement in our lives and the life of our community. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us firm upon the book and the Sunnah until we die. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ Like our Sheikh, the Imam of the Sunnah in Yemen, Sheikh Mukbir Rahimahullah used to say, our belief and our call, our da'wah, they are more beloved to us than our own selves, our money, our wealth, and our children. دَعْوَتُنَا وَعَقِيدَتُنَا أَحَبُّ إِلَيْنَا مِنْ أَنفُسِنَا وَأَمْوَالِنَا وَأَبْنَائِنَا we love our aqidah, our da'wah more than anything, more than our own selves, more than our wealth, and more than even our own children. He said, فَلَسْنَا مُسْتَعِدِّينَ أَنَّ نَبِيعَهَا بِالذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرَقِ And we are never prepared to sell it for gold or money. As Awza'i rahimahullah, he said, نَدُورُ مَعَ السُنَّ حَيْثُ دَارَتْ We go with the sunnah wherever it takes us. That being said, as soon as the incident happened in West Philadelphia, for you to understand and know, because maybe some do not know, Sheikh Talha rahimahullah ta'ala and some brothers, they reached out to members of that community to offer any assistance that may be needed. As any transgression against the masjid or a Muslim community is a transgression against the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the masjid was in danger, then we would be on the front line in defense of the house of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and the Muslims. I'll close with a story. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And we all know who Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was. A man who died in prison because of his defense of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf of the Ummah. A man who was in prison for speaking the truth on various occasions. A man who wrote a book, Aqeedat al wasitiyah and he was in prison because of his Aqeedah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, one of his enemies died. One of the enemies of Shaykh al-Islam died. And he was an enemy of Ibn Taymiyyah because Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was upon the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. He wasn't a fraud. You know, like some people, it depends what meeting they're in, what tongue they speak with. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rajjal He was a man of integrity and honor. Because the religion of Allah is the religion of Allah wherever we are. Whoever we're in front of. When the Prophet sallallahu wrote letters to the kings and the rulers of the earth. From the Persians and the Romans and other than them. He did not compromise his call or his aqidah. The belief of al-Islam. He was clear and he was firm. But still... He was sent as a mercy to the whole of mankind. So they came, some of the students, they came to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And they gave him glad tidings. They were happy. Your enemies died. Your enemy has died. Because they know that this person was an innovator. He was a mubtadi. He was an innovator. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. What was his response? He scolded those students. He rebuked them. Immediately he went to the family. Look, look at ibn Taymiyyah. The people of Sunnah, we don't have beefs with any of the Muslims. Yes, we give advice. If we see an error, like we expect if somebody sees a religious error with us, that they give us advice as well. But there's no beefs. It's not about turf. It's the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah immediately, he went to the family and he said, even though, yes, he stood firm upon his aqidah and his methodology, he said, I will fill the void that your father has left. He said, if you need anything, I will provide it for you. That was his enemy. Some of us treat our own brothers worse than our enemies. Some of us, if we have friends like that, who needs enemies? And that is why brothers and sisters, yes, the young and the old. Implementation of the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the companions, it strengthens our communities. It does not weaken them. Speaking the truth. And trying to adhere to the truth strengthens our community. It does not weaken them. That establishes bonds of brotherhood that cannot be broken, nor can they be bought. When we come in public and we pretend that we like each other, but we're backbiting each other in private, or we're slandering each other, or we're undermining each other, billah. That is why you see the weakness and that is why we see the problems and that is why we see the chaos because 
the sincere brotherhood has been lost. Allah said in the Quran, لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا If you were to spend everything in the earth, you would have never united their hearts. You would have never united their hearts. Allah united their hearts. Upon what? Quran, Sunnah, with understanding of the self of the Ummah. It wasn't based upon color. It wasn't based upon nationality. It wasn't based upon anything. It was based upon La ilaha illallah. One of the problems we have, some of our communities, they have nationalistic calls. They want the Arabs to be with the Arab agenda. The non-Arabs with the non-Arab agenda. The whites with the white agenda. The blacks with the black agenda. Fragmenting the ummah and weakening us from within. Even giving no importance to aqidah. Because some of them, they've welcomed now the nation of Islam into their midst. And the nation of Islam are not even Muslims. That's like welcoming wal'iyadu billah as well. The Ahmadiyya who are not Muslims. Unity, brothers and sisters, is based upon the Quran, the sunnah, with the understanding of the salaf of the ummah. That will rectify the problems that we see in society. Islam is the solution. We ask Allah Azza to bless us to implement it correctly. Ramadan is over. As Allah Azza said about the month of Ramadan, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Fasting was prescribed for you like it was prescribed for those who came before you so that you may be pious. Now is the test. This is the test. How have we prepared our own souls to continue after Ramadan? How have we prepared ourselves now after Ramadan? Mada ba'da Ramadan? Are we going to continue to pray? Are we going to continue to fulfill the rights of Allah after the rights of Allah, the rights of the people? Are we going to continue to learn? Are we going to continue to sacrifice and struggle? Now is the test. Ramadan, naam, if you fast the Ramadan correctly, you prepared yourself for the rest of the year and maybe for the rest of your life. What is after Ramadan? Mada ba'da Ramadan. After Ramadan, it's a sign how your Ramadan went. How did you spend Ramadan? Brothers and sisters, all of us have a duty, all of us have a responsibility. All of us have a task. Barakallahu feekum. We ask Allah's job for success.